And good afternoon and welcome to the Naked Conk Hour. I'm your host, Matt Gardy, joining you here on the Conk Broadcasting Network. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, we've got a lot to discuss. We're going to talk about... Um, missing inventory, we're going to talk about responsiveness of uh, government officials, we're going to talk a little bit about journalism and accuracy in reporting, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot of different things. We're going to try uh, getting some uh, different audio in here as well it's for, uh, for a twist to the show. So I'm, I am your host, Matt Carty. I also uh, do the blog at www.nakedconk.com, and we're going to find a lot of the documents I'm referring to on today's show are available on that blog. Um, today's show really stems from um, a long exchange that occurred between myself and uh, Robert Eady of the Department of Health here in Monroe County and it centered around um, my trying to find out some more information uh, about potentially uh, some missing uh, inventory items and in this light of in our community where we're hearing all the iPad scandals uh, we, you know, in this world, I would hope that most uh, agency administrators would be as forthcoming as possible and try to alleviate any concerns from the public. Um, and what ensued was really, uh, I feel uh, the walls went up when I started asking questions. And one of the reasons I'm ask I was asking questions was to be as factual as possible. And uh, ultimately, I did end up writing a column in Comp Life newspaper, which is distributed up and down the Keys. And I relied on all the facts I had present at the time I, I wrote that article, and I still stand by everything I wrote, and, in, and I still believe everything and every question I've asked is based on fact. Um, and apparently, you know, Mr. Eady was a little upset about this, felt it was unfair, uh, and he got on uh, Guy DeBoer show, the uh, host of this whole network, um, and discussed it a little bit. And we're going to play parts of that show, that, uh, that exchange between Guy and Mr. Eady as well later on in the show. But uh, just to you know, recap a little bit of the background of how we got to this point was, um, again, I, I work at the state attorney's office. I've worked at the public defender's office. I'm the uh, IT director of the state attorney's office. And there is uh, a lot of accounting in terms of the uh, county inventory. And, and being in the IT department, I know how challenging it is. Equipment moves around. Uh, you have laptops in people's cars, radios that some investigators have. It's a challenge keeping track of the inventory. And, and ultimately properly disposing of it when it becomes obsolete. Um, however, in this day and age, you'd hope, uh, you know, again, with just the recent iPad scandal, that if any questions really arose, uh, that we should be doubly uh, conscious of making sure the public is comfortable with the way we uh, keep track of the accounting and uh, of the inventory. And to that end, I happened to stop, stop in a, a month or so ago into Subway to grab a, a bite to eat. And I ran into the former um, inventory manager of the county who worked in Danny College's office, the county clerk's office, and surprised to learn that he had left. Now, I had worked with this gentleman a number of times uh, through, I believe, with that, this particular individual twice at the state attorney's office doing a complete inventory top to bottom, where I might say we've never uh, lost one piece of equipment. I'm, I'm Again, I'm saying it's hard to keep track of, but we do challenge it. And this individual was very dedicated, uh, conscientious. He, you know, worked with me well. Uh, you know, when we had things like an, an investigator having a radio and we had to get him and, and this, uh, the inventory clerk, uh, clerk together at the same place at the same time. It was a bit of a challenge sometimes, but we were able to do it. And uh, ultimately, when I disposed of certain uh, components of our, our public, uh, of the county inventory, some of them went to charities. We documented that. Uh, we had the charity sign off on that. Some, some that were below inventory level went to area schools, some, and some we disposed of that were, that were uh, um, useless obsolete equipment. And so it's a challenge. I'm not saying it's not a challenge, but I ran into this gentleman and he wasn't working for the clerk's office anymore, which kind of just, I said, oh, well, that's a, that's a shame. You know, I thought you did a fantastic job. Let's talk about, you know, like, why, why'd you leave? And he insinuated to me that uh, he had some problems with certain agencies in the county and that he was asked to resign as a result of trying to bring the, to light these problems with certain agencies. And he was very quiet about it. He didn't really want to dig into it. And he, he just wanted to move on with his life. And he was working a different job. And I respect that to some extent. But he mentioned to me that he had actually filed a complaint at the state attorney's office where I worked. Um, regarding this uh, months and months ago, and in fact, back in September of 2011. Well, that uh, intrigued me. 
And I said, well, okay. I bid him, bid him well, and I, you know, I subsequently followed up with some emails uh, with him. Uh, but I went to the state attorney's office uh, where I worked. Obviously, it was still lunchtime, and I made a public records request of uh, Chris Weber, an investigator there. And I said, could you provide me with uh, uh, the complaint that this gentleman had made back in September of 2011? And uh, I'll read for that. I read that to you now. It said the complaint was the whistleblower regarding spending practices and waste in Monroe County. According to the caller, he was asked to resign because he brought allegations to his superiors in the county. He also alleges that an inventory shows that the health department is short of $250,000 of missing computers. He also mentioned selling time on the county shredder but was not specific. Now this investigation was uh, brought to a conclusion because it was never actually really initiated. I believe Investigator Weber uh, provided uh, the caller with some information on what he could do with uh, whistleblower protection laws uh, in, in the event that he was being forced to resign. He felt it was as a result of his job performance uh, and he also suggested maybe he could come back with more details uh, in a written complaint that they could actually begin an investigation with and apparently uh, the, the individual never came back. But the, the record of this complaint was on file. Uh, it matched exactly what the gentleman told me uh, in the uh, at, when I ran into him at lunch, and it began to concern me because this is uh, shortly before the iPad scandal had broken, broken out. And so I made a public records request of the county clerk's office, and I asked them to provide me with a uh, the last couple years of the inventory reports for the health department. And uh, they did. They were uh, the clerk's office responded, and they gave me a uh, PDF. That, and this is all on the blog. And if you do a search for the health department or inventory, you'll probably come up with the exact uh, segment on my blog at nakedconk.com. Uh, and you can review these documents yourself. And again, and this is a copy of the of the actual complaint that was at the state attorney's office as provided to me uh, as a public records request. And again, the reason I'm referencing this and being so specific is because ultimately down the road, I believe my credibility is. Challenge. And I think frequently journalists that aren't mainstream media, their credibility is challenged as people say, we don't follow journalistic standards or we don't try to get our facts straight, we don't fact check. And I believe in this case, I could not have tried any harder uh, to try to determine what went on and have only ever spoken from fact. And I've been accused of doing the exact opposite. So that's why I mean, this show is going to be pretty interesting because we're going to go through all the facts I have and what I deem to be, uh, you know, I think walls built up from government agencies instead where they should be as forthcoming as possible. Uh, in this report, uh, I just want to start time-wise going backwards, was a, uh, le a, a letter that Mr. Eady, the head of the health department, wrote to um, the, the uh, Mr. Maddock of the county clerk's office. And he said, uh, please accept this email as an explanation uh, regarding the destruction of the material in question and a request for authorization to dispose of it. The computers and other IT equipment were obsolete and had been removed from service. Uh, he then says, my staff and I conducted a thorough search. Uh, the only documentation we can find is a certificate of recycling of the material pr uh, process. I have attached a copy. He then says, again, this is from October 2009, we have adopted procedures that will prevent the disposition on public assets without proper author authorization. Bob Eady. This is, again, an email from Bob Eady provided by a public records request from the clerk's office. Um, he, he then went on to list, uh, to show a, a long list of equipment that was, again, it was like, it was obsolete. I suggested it was obsolete, most of it. There, there was some equipment from 2009 um, in this public records request. Uh, and that he signed off on, and he was just trying to say, okay, now we're properly disposing of it by putting a deletion request before the county commission so they could sign off on it, so we could zero the inventory, basically, of all this ancient equipment that had put, been put in the Gato building. It was obsolete. It wasn't in use anymore. And, and we'll clear up, and we'll go, go forward from there. And, uh, and that was in 2009, October 2009. Come back. We'll be right back. This is the Naked Conk Hour. I'm your host, Matt Gardy. We're going to get into a little more specifics and facts and reporting. And uh, we hope to see you back in just a minute. 